Okay, so uh, I will be presenting a case of an adrenal mass and I have been very lucky to be mentored by Dr. Vijaya Sarthi on this case. Um, so our case is uh, informant is mother of an 18 month old boy residing at Pune who presented to us with complaint of enlargement of phallus for 3 months and appearance of pubic hair since 3 months. Go to next slide. Uh, Go to next slide. Actually, you can close and reshare. Maybe that may work. Would you like to do that, Shiranta? Yes, I'll like take close try? and reshare. Yeah, please. We can see your screen. Can you try sli uh, slideshow? Yes. Um, it's not getting on? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, on my computer, the slideshow is getting on. Okay. Okay. Some days we're not able to see. So we'll, uh, but you have to move the slides uh, whenever you're, uh, as per the information. Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, okay, so uh, we present to you a case of an 18 month old boy uh, who uh, uh, residing at Pune who presented to us with complaint of enlargement of phallus for three months and appearance of pubic hair since last three months. Um, he presented with uh, aggressive behavior, hyperactivity irritability, reduced sleep, and acne. There was no history of underarm hair growth, no neurocutaneous markers, hyperpigmentation, past history of hypoglycemia or salt wasting episodes, or no family history of malignancy. Uh, I would like to intervene. So, go back to your previous slide, please. Yes, sir. So, like, what is the reason you asked for neurocutaneous markers in this patient? Um, sir, uh, 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 in the Macune Albright syndrome, there is presence of caffeolate spots, uh, which can be associated with uh, precocious puberty. So, we asked for the neurocutaneous markers. How common precocious puberty in Macune Albright for a boy? Sir, it is not uh, common. It is a very rare uh, finding, but just for completion. Okay, but which neurocutaneous syndrome is more likely to cause precocious puberty in a boy? Sir, new, um, a neurofibromatosis. Right. So, what is the cause of precocious puberty in neurofibromatosis? One. Um, yes. That's typically the optic gliomas, right? Sitting in the cellular, yes. uh, suprasellar area, they yes, are sir. the causes of precocious puberty, right? Yes. And I think like it's very clear that you wanted to also rule out the possibility of uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. That's why you asked for hypoglycemia and salt wasting crisis. Yes, right? Yeah, please go. Yes, sir. So on birth history, the uh, boy was a full term vaginally delivered three kg child born to non consanguineous parents without any events in the perinatal and postnatal period. Um, on anthropometry, the height of the child was, eight, length of the child was 82 centimeters. So the Z score was minus 0 0.1. The weight was 13 kg. So the Z score was of 1.4. The weight for height was falling between 50th to 99th centile. Head circumference was exactly on the 50th centile at 47.5 centimeter. 
whereas the mid parental height was 162.5 cm that is between 3rd to the 10th centile okay so do you see that the height uh, centile of this child is unusual yes sir so okay? the height of the child uh, as such is uh, close to the 50th centile but for the mid parental height it is still uh, more than it should be very good so though it seems to be and the median for the reference population it's yes. actually almost sitting somewhere at the 90th centile for the mid parental height sds so what yes. could be the Dr. Vijay Sarathi, could you repeat your question? Load down. Dr. Vijay Sarathi, uh, we are not able to hear you. For me? Yeah. Okay. Is it audible now? Suresh? Yes, yes, please. Yes. Right. So, uh, Chirantab, the question was like, uh, if at all, if the height spurt is not noticed in a child with precocious puberty, what are the possibilities you will think of? Uh, maybe the duration of the illness might be very short. So maybe very presented good. with puberty early. So we caught, matlab, uh, we identified the child early and we were not able to identify the growth spurt. Very good. Next. Or uh, maybe if the parents are only tall, the mid parental height is... Uh, uh, tall, so we would expect the child to have uh, more length. So we may not suspect that it is uh, accelerated growth spurt in the child. Right. Any other hormonal excess or hormonal deficiency in a given setting can prevent the height spurt? Um, hypo, uh, decrease uh, hypothyroidism uh, if it is associated may cause. Uh, Decrease yeah, in the one thing spurt. is hypothyroidism, but probably in a boy, we don't see any enlargement of phallus or a pubic hair. So, where a condition is there where we can see these features, but still there's something can interfere with height spurt? A cortisol uh, excess, very good. So yes, cortisol excess excellent. can do that. Very yes. rarely, uh, maybe growth hormone deficiencies, especially in patients with central precocious puberty, a concomitant growth hormone deficiency can also prevent it. Good. Please move. Um, so, on uh, general examination, the child had acne, hypertrichosis, muscular habitus, and was hyperactive. His on his vitals were all normal. Temperature was ninety eight point six. Pulse rate was one twenty six per minute. Respiratory rate was thirty per minute and regular. However, he had elevated blood pressure, which was one twenty by ninety millimeters of mercury, which was way above the ninety fifth centile. On per abdomen examination, a palpable mass was present on the right side of abdomen. There was no axillary hair or cushingoid faces uh, on the child. So, was uh, there any hype? Chiranta, uh, two yes. points here. One is that, like blood pressure, do you want to exactly put it into staging to uh, know what exactly? Yes, sir. So, based on his uh, length uh, centiles, uh, and age, uh, it was stage 1 hypertension, sir. So, almost touching or maybe slightly almost. more than, yeah, right? Because I think yes. 95th percentile, somewhere may fall around 91, 92 for a 50th centile. For that, even if I take age as 2 years, so probably it's almost falling into stage 2. Stage it's two. pretty significant hypertension, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, again, the second point is, did the child had any uh, hypertrichosis on the forehead or on the cheek anywhere? Yes, sir. On the forehead, uh, there was presence of uh, uh, excessive hair. What does it indicate? Um, the elevated levels of androgens. No, because forehead is not an androgen dependent region, right? So, if you have seen your nephrotic syndrome children, right, who are treated with glucocorticoids, so typically you see the hair growing on the cheeks and the forehead, right? What does it indicate? Uh, the steroid excess. Uh, steroid excess. Why do you think this patient might have had some clinical clues for 
Cushing, but still he did not come up with the Frank Cushingoid facies. What could be the possible reasons? Um, maybe the virilizing uh, features of the child would uh, hide the hide the features of uh, uh, Cushing syndrome, and so only maybe hypertension is the only feature of Cushing's that uh, manifested, while others were overshadowed by the virilizing features. Very good. So it's probably the quite excess of anabolic action of androgens have masked the catabolic features of the uh, cortisol excess. In fact, as such, in any child, already growth hormone is there, which is opposing the catabolic actions of cortisol, right? So in addition to that, such excess of androgens would have further masked the effect of cortisol. But still, probably the hypertrichosis was visible. As you said, hypertension was probably because of cortisol excess. But what could be the other causes of uh, hypertension in this child? Um, the uh, the mineralocorticoid axis. Uh, could or also... you want to say like, for example, let us know what the diagnosis is. But if you want to take a combination of precocious puberty with hypertension, what all what are the possibilities which you would like to entertain? Um, so, uh, a precocious puberty with... Uh, Hypertension, we would uh, think of uh, adrenocortical tumors. Okay. Uh, then uh, any tumor that is secreting HCG, the HCG secreting tumors. Mm, less likely, unless a pheochromocytoma is secreting HCG, then you won't get, get the combo. And pheo secreting HCG is a rare occurrence, though it occurs, right? So, other common phenomena where you can have uh, the combo. Um, then uh, uh, the renal cell 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency could do this, yes, sir. Right, right. Glucocorticoid resistance syndrome can do this, yes, sir. Again, a very rare disorder, but precocious puberty with uh, hypertension can pitch in, right? Yes, Rarely neurofibromatosis 1, right, where you can have a renal, uh, renal artery abnormalities with. Uh, precocity because of the optic glioma or a few with the optic glioma giving a combo. These are the possibilities you should keep in mind. Right. Yes. Go, ahead. Go ahead, please. So, uh, these are the clinical pictures of the child. Uh, so, as we can see on the genital examination, the phallus is uh, uh, of a G5 stage according to the tanner. The pubic hair have started to appear, so it is P2. However, the testicular volume of the child was not uh, high, as but the scrotal size we can see was very large. So, uh, the testicular volume was 2 ml on both the sides. So, what does this suggest, the testicular volume? Uh, that uh, because testicular volume is less than 4 ml, uh, may, we can eliminate the central uh, precocious puberty uh, as a cause for right. the precocity and focus on peripheral causes. Very good. Go to the next slide. Um, so, on basis of the history and examination, uh, the differential diagnosis uh, uh, that we uh, made for the case are adrenocortical tumors, adenoma or carcinoma, HCG Which secreting is more likely, tumor. Chiranta, among yes, adenoma sir. and carcinoma, which is more likely? The so carcinoma is more likely because uh, there is presence of hormone excess of two zones of the adrenal gland. Okay, so because you are considering hypertrichosis as well as uh, hypertension in addition yes. to virilization. So, you are thinking of two hormone excess. So, you are yes, saying sir. Uh, carcinoma is more carcinoma. likely. Yes, sir. Otherwise, as a possibility of occurrence, what do you think is more common? Uh, sir, adenoma is on, uh, one third of the cases of adrenal tumors. In fact, so, adenoma is a very rare tumor in children, whereas carcinoma is the most common, uh, you know, accounting for the majority of the adenocortical tumors. Right. Yes. Then, then uh, HCG secreting tumors. Right. Then congenital adrenal hyperplasia and testotoxicosis. What is against adenocortical adenoma, CAH, or testotoxicosis in this particular case? Uh, what goes in against of uh, even uh, adrenocortical adenoma? I don't want to buy here. CAH and testotoxicosis are definitely not. 
but you give me one physical finding which makes me to think or not to think about these three disorders you said there was a palpable mass isn't it palpable mass going, yes so we are not going to expect a palpable mass in an adenocortical adenoma or a cah or a testotoxicosis yes, probably yes. with this i would limit to adenocortical carcinoma or rarely an hcg secreting tumor that may be arising from the liver right yes sir please more so uh, the child was evaluated and the laboratory investigations showed uh, testosterone to be 2110 nanogram per deciliter the dhea's level was 1560 microgram per deciliter which is again very elevated the 17 uh, hydroxy progesterone was 9 nanogram per ml the lh and fsh were within the normal limits at 0.1 and 0.01 milli international unit per ml alpha fetoprotein and beta hcg also were uh, undetectable at less than 2 nanogram and 2 milli international unit per ml whereas the cortisol levels at 8 am and midnight were elevated uh, 15 microgram per deciliter and 8 microgram per deciliter right so a small correction chiranta i would yes. i won't say the atm cortisol is elevated because 15 microgram per deciliter is a normal cortisol for any human being whereas there is inappropriate elevation of the midnight cortisol typically yes. we expect it to be less than 1.8 but it's inappropriately elevated which is probably suggesting of a endogenous cushing syndrome right yes sir right go ahead well, how do you interpret dhas and testosterone for this patient So they are uh, elevated, like more than uh, Mar- markedly, markedly elevated. Markedly right? elevated. Yes. So, what is the one disorder we could like to think here with the given DHEs level? What is the one disorder you would like to think? Um, so the uh, adrenal carcinoma. Right. It's just adenocortical carcinoma. Probably we are not going to think any other differential diagnosis here, right? Because it's a boy who is present with a normal external genitalia okay without any ambi- uh, you know atypical genitalia so with post pubertal virilization and dhc is being so high almost we are at the diagnosis right yes sir okay. next slide please um so uh, on the radiological uh, evaluation we did the bone age of the child and on the uh, x ray bone age we found that the uh, bone age click of on, the child was 4.2 click 2. on the next slide chiranta please click on the next slide so that audience can vis- see that slide yeah please yeah, yeah. continue so the bone age was 4.2 years by the tanner white house method so as we can see on the growth chart the bone age was advanced by around 2 and 1/2 years as compared to the uh, height of the child Uh, on the ultrasound evaluation uh, a heteroechoic mass was uh, found occupying in the right side of the abdomen with calcification in the center of the mass right what does it suggest uh, sir again it is a feature of uh, carcinoma with the calcifications and uh, necrosis do you have any uh, size parameters here which can give me some more confidence to say it is adenocortical carcinoma uh, sir on the report it said that the size was more than 5 cm very good. fine go ahead because that itself says me again it's not adenoma very likely to be a carcinoma carcinoma yes sir so uh, the patient was diagnosed to have an adrenal tumor first uh, because uh, because he was hypertensive anti hypertensives were started to the patient uh, that included an ace inhibitor and a beta blocker then uh, uh chiranta yes, just sir. i would like to take 2 minutes here like did you mention about the potassium of this patient a uh, potassium of this child was uh, normal normal good so like what are the usual causes of hypertension in patient with adenocortical carcinoma uh, so, uh hypercortisolemia can be the cause of uh, hypertension in patients of acc very good any other causes uh, sir uh, if it involves the mineralocorticoid layers then uh, excess of renin aldosterone can also cause uh, hypertension uh, excess aldosterone i mean to say right so there yes. could be co secretion of mineralocorticoids 
which could be aldosterone per se or rarely even 18 deoxycorticosterone can also be produced yes. doc can yes, also sir. be produced irrespective of the aldosterone production so these yes, could be the three possible reasons for hypertension in adrenocortical carcinoma yes Please, go ahead go ahead uh so uh, first uh, anti hypertensives were given to the child before the surgery to uh, control the blood pressure then uh, because the contralateral adrenal gland is also suppressed and it's a situation of stress so iv hydrocortisone was given and uh, followed by replacement for uh, hydrocortisone was given and the tumor was resected surgically uh as we can see uh, on the scale the size of the tumor resected was around 6.5 cm and upon sending on the histopathological examination the diagnosis of adrenocortical carcinoma was confirmed so uh just the summary of the case uh that an 18 month old child presented to us with pubarche and phallic enlargement over last 3 months on evaluation there was advanced bonage adrenal mass on usg elevated cortisol levels and tumoral range levels of testosterone and dhes the histopathology after surgical resection revealed an adrenocortical carcinoma right uh thank you chirantap for the such a wonderful presentation so thank you sir Sri srisha do we have time for uh, discussion Uh, yeah, we have two minutes, sir, Doctor Vijay. Yeah, you can just move on to the presentation. Yes, sir. Shrianta. Yes, sir. Uh, are the slides visible, sir? Yeah, it's visible. Right. Okay. So uh, let's, just, let's take them yes. a bit faster. I think we are exceeding our uh, time. Right. Yes, sir. Right. So. so uh, the, Let, yes sir. the question is like uh, what is the incidence of adrenocortical carcinoma in children and what is the usual age of presentation so adrenocortical tumors are very rare in children and their incidence is 0.2 to 0.3 cases per million they are an important cause of cushing syndrome in infants and preschool age it has bimodal age distribution with uh, peaks during the first and the fourth decade but it is important to note that 65% of tumors occur in children under 5 years and its age distribution is similar to that of an embryonic tumor right so is there any effect of age on the prognosis of uh, childhood acc yes sir uh, less than 3 years uh, age uh, yes. the prognosis yeah less than 4 years is a better prognosis whereas adolescents have the worst prognosis in fact yes right? sir so we know like fio is associated with uh, several heritable syndromes is it also true for adrenocortical cancer Uh, uh, actually, adrenocortical uh, cancer. Uh, it is established that it is associated only with Lee-Fromenny syndrome, which is an autosomal dominant uh, syndrome due to mutation of uh, tumor suppressor gene uh, P53, which is present on chromosome 17, which has increased risk of other childhood carcinomas, leukemias, brain tumors, and osteosarcomas. Other syndrome that is associated with it is Beckwith-Widman syndrome. if i want to ask like what percentage of acc in the children are actually having tp53 mutation germline uh, mutation 50% around 50% sir right but if i ask the vice versa like what percentage of leaf from any patients will have acc during childhood very rare sir very rare right especially with the brazil mutation of 337 only yes. 2% otherwise maybe yes. around 5% right okay yes. go on us uh, Yes, sir. This. Oh, uh, how? Like, uh, I think is well, very well known to all of us. Shall we go to the next question? Yes, sir. Let's. I would like to focus a bit on management. So, let me ask a direct question. How do you want to manage ACC patients? Uh, sir. So, if a patient of ACC presents to us, we would first like to confirm the excess of adrenocortical uh, hormones. So, for those patients, we would like to see baseline investigations that include DHEAS. 17 hydroxy progesterone testosterone and urinary 17 ketosteroid amongst others uh ketosteroids may not be the preferred one in the current scenario i agree with the dhas and testosterone and the cortisol axis evaluation are the most important things in addition yes, to sir. at least an electrolyte to rule out a concomitant mineral corticoid excess yes right 
Fine. And radiological Fine. investigations like USG or CT to localize the tumor. Right. So, how do you stage? Which is the most accepted staging for children? Uh, so, uh, so uh, pediatric uh, adrenocortical tumors can be categorized as benign adenoma, intermediate for uh, malignant potential, and carcinomas. Uh, important point that differentiates the two is that adenomas tend to secrete cortisol only, whereas carcinomas will secrete a combination of hormones, most likely androgens and cortisol. Right. Uh, so usually, uh, yes, I think like uh, we exceeded the time. Uh, yes, sir. So in yeah. others. Uh, let's conclude this, Chiranta. Thank you so much for the uh, presentation and uh, the interactive yes. session. Please take over. Just Dr. one Tula. second, sir. I think uh, Dr. Tule uh, uh, has joined uh, from uh, Turkey. Uh, I think she wanted to make a comment. Dr. Tule? I would just add that uh, the clinical picture develops very quickly. So in malignant ad adrenocortical uh, carcinoma, carcinoma, even if it uh, secretes uh, aldosterone and cortisol, um, you cannot find the findings of uh, glucocorticoid excess. And the uh, main feature of malignant adrenocortical carcinoma is hypersecretion of androgens. So you see the findings of androgens mainly. And uh, in the physical examination, you, um, we shouldn't uh, forget to uh, check for hemihypertrophy and signs of Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome. Sometimes it is not apparent. We have published such a case with adrenocortical carcinoma. And I would also suggest to look for neuron-specific annulase. Sometimes adrenal masses are due to neuroblastomas at, the, at this age. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.